Now we've got Jen in the supine position. And in this position again, we're going to look at the knee, we're going to feel the knee, and then we're going to move the knee. We're going to start by looking at the knee. And again, Jen's here now in the supine position. And we'll just point out the normal structures. The patella and the superpatellar bursa, the medial peripatellar groove, the lateral peripatellar groove, the patellar tendon, the superpatellar pouch or superpatellar bursa, the quadriceps muscle, and the anserine bursa. Now again, looking for swelling, you want to look for loss of the medial and lateral peripatellar grooves and fullness in the superpatellar pouch. Specific other locations you can look for swelling include the prepatellar bursa here, the patellar tendon, the anterior bursa. And again, you want to compare both quads and look for wasting of the quads on the affected side. We're going to now move on to feeling the knee. And the first thing you always want to feel for is warmth. Now the knee should be about a degree cooler than the surrounding tissue. So you're going to start up here, you feel down across the knee and down onto the tibia. And you want to notice that about a one degree temperature change in the knee. Some people like to feel with the back of their hand. The next thing you want to feel for is swelling in the knee. Now I like to use two tests for swelling. For small effusions, you can use the fluid wave test or the milking test. And what you want to do here is you want to bring the fluid up into the superpatellar pouch immediately and then milk it down laterally. So again, up into the superpatellar pouch medially, milking it down laterally, and you'll see a little fluid wave here on the medial side of the knee. So again, up medially, down laterally. For larger effusions, I really like to use the Belotman test. And with this test, you can think of the knee like a water balloon. And what you're going to do is you're going to place your hand, especially this part of the hand here, in the superpatellar pouch, and you're going to push down through this part of the hand, and then with this the other hand, you're going to use these two fingers and you're going to squeeze. And if that knee is swollen, you'll feel the fluid wave transmitted into this hand from this hand. And it's quite obvious when it occurs. Now the last thing we're going to do for feeling is feel to make sure both the backs of our knees are touching the table. You can also look for this as well, but this will give you an idea if there's a flexion contracture of the knee. We're going to go now move on to palpating the structures around the knee. I like to have the knees in a slightly flexed position when we do this. Now I'll be alternating back and forth between the knees as I do this so it's a little bit easier for you to see. But when you're doing it, you should do one knee completely and then compare with the other side. For palpation, I'm going to start anteriorly, moving from the superior position inferiorly. So we'll start with the quadriceps muscle, palpating down the quadriceps muscle, over the superpatellar bursa, and into the insertion of the quadriceps into the, into the patella. I'll move over the patella, noting for any bony tenderness or swelling, down into the patellar tendon, into the tibial tubercle, and then down along the tibia, again noting for any tenderness or pain. I then like to move onto the lateral side. And I like to move up the fibula, and right at the end, noting for any pain or tenderness, and right at the end of the fibula, you'll find the joint line. And you can palpate along that joint line for any tenderness or discomfort. Now you can see tenderness in knees with meniscal problems. You can also see tenderness in knees with arthritic problems. I want you to note, though, just how inferior the joint line is to the patella. A lot of students make the mistake of palpating up here. So we're going to move along that the lateral joint line, and then we'll move up onto the lateral femoral condyle, and then up into the vastus lateralis and along the iliotibial band, again noting for any tenderness or discomfort. Now then I'll move back down here along the lateral joint line, and move back medially, and now onto the medial joint line, which I'm going to show you for demonstration purposes just on this knee. Again, palpating along the medial joint line, noting for any tenderness. You can then move inferiorly onto the anterior bursa here, which is the insertion of the adductor muscle group. And then you can move down the medial aspect of the tibia, again noting for any discomfort. Moving back up to the joint line, you can move along, superiorly along the vastus lateralis, 
and the adductor group of muscles, again, noting for any tenderness. Now, we've just moved over to the side here to look at posterior palpation. And for that, we're gonna get Jen to just flex her leg a little bit, and we're gonna feel just down the hamstrings muscle into the popliteal fossa here. And this is where you wanna feel for a Baker cyst. Now, a Baker cyst is actually when the knee swells up and it herniates out the backside, and it's called a Baker cyst. So it's just an extension of knee swelling. You can feel for that in the popliteal fossa. You can also feel the popliteal pulse. And then moving down inferiorly, you can feel along the calves for any tenderness or other abnormalities. Again, you always want to compare both sides uh, to look for differences. We're now going to move on to the range of motion of the knee. For range of motion, we're going to move on to the passive component. We've tested the active component in standing by getting Jen to squat. Now, passive range of motion, you always want to put your hand over the knee to feel the knee as well. And what you're feeling for is crepitus. Crepitus in the lateral joint space compartment, the medial joint space compartment, and patellofemoral crepitus. So you put your hand over the knee, and we're going to agenda bend her knee all the way up fully in the full flexion. And here, the calf should touch the hamstrings, and normal full flexion of the knee is about 135 degrees. Now we're going to have Jen, we're feeling again for crepitus in those compartments, have her extend the knee all the way back out, making sure it touches the table. And in most people, they'll have a little bit of passive hyperextension of that extremity. Now when I see loss of passive hyperextension, it's often an early clue to early arthritis developing in that knee. We're now going to move on to looking at the stability and the meniscal testing around the knee.